Welcome to Advent of View challenge number 9, which is to do with sorting out objects in an array. This is a fairly straightforward challenge in terms of implementation, but it is going to give us a chance to talk about some philosophy around separation of concerns, and I'd also like to show you one of my favorite TypeScript uh, tricks. The goal is this, we have an array of presents and we need to sort them out either in ascending or descending order based on their dimensions, which is going to be the total area, the width multiplied by the height. We have all that information, so it is going to be fairly straightforward to implement. As soon as I saw this challenge, before I even looked at the component, I knew I wanted to use test-driven development for this. We are doing a lot of sorting, which is something I always seem to mess up, and it's also something that is very awkward to test through a user interface. I'd much rather write tests to guarantee everything is working correctly. So I'm not even going to start working on the component yet. We're going to work on our logic in isolation, and then we're going to glue it all together at the end. I'm going to go ahead and run npx vtest to start off my tests. I already created a test file. It's going to do two things, sort in ascending or descending order. And I have a module for that as well, which I have not implemented yet. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with a function called sort, and this is going to take an array of presents. Let's just go ahead and call it list for now. I would like to get type definitions for this, and they're currently not provided, but there's a really cool trick we can use to get them. You can see presence is an array, or a JSON file. It's going to have all these objects which have ID, source, and dimensions. And I'd like to infer these type definitions. I'm going to show you how to do that now. First thing we're going to do is jump up here and we're going to say import type. This is going to import the type, but not the actual module, which is pretty nice. It's called presence. It's going to be the default export because it is a JSON file, and we're going to grab the presence. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and define a type, and I'm going to call it present. Presence is going to be an array, so we can say type of presence, which is going to be an array type. We're then going to grab the index, which can be a number, and this is actually going to give us the type of a present. And this is really neat. We're able to infer the type definition dynamically. If we ever update the presence JSON, this is going to be updated as well. So we have a single source of truth for our type definition. So this is going to be an array of present. Let's just go ahead and pass it in. And just to prove this one is working correctly, I'm going to give it a name. And you can see if I go and start typing, I am getting those uh, array elements correctly. So this is working as expected. Another nice thing to note is I'm using import type. So we're not going to actually import this module. We're just going to get the type definitions. In the production code, there's not going to be any side effect from importing this module. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and sort out these elements. Uh, before we go any further, I'm actually going to write the test, watch it fail, and then we're going to write the implementation and get this one to pass. Again, we're going to jump up here and import our type definition by saying import type. And that one is going to come from sort. I'm going to grab present type. Uh, we can technically do both the type and the actual function import in the same import, but I wanted to separate them to show you that you can do this. This is going to give us a side effect in production from the sort import, but this one is not. It's going to be stripped out when we compile it. Either way, let's go ahead and see if we can sort these, sort these in descending order. I'm going to go ahead and create two te test definitions or test fixtures, starting off with A. The first one's going to be a present. I'm going to give it an ID of, let's say, 1. Uh, the other key is going to be source and dimensions. Source doesn't really matter here, but dimensions does matter. I'm going to give it a height of, let's say, 1, and we're also going to give it a width of 1. Finally, we're going to need one more just to make sure this is working. I'm going to call it B, and it's just going to have a height and width of 2. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and define my expected value here. It is going to be an array of presents, so let's go ahead and type that one out. And it's going to be in ascending order. So we're going to start off with A, and then we're going to have B. Finally, let's go ahead and create our actual value. So const actual is going to be equal to sort, which is going to take our list. I'm going to put them in the opposite order, B and A. So it should correctly reverse these. Finally, we're going to expect the actual is equal to expected. So expect actual to equal, and then pass in expected. Uh, with a bit of luck, this should work, and I think I accidentally imported this, so I'm going to delete it. Finally, let's save it off and watch it fail. And of course, it is failing. The next thing we're going to need to do is implement it, so let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is create a new function here. I'm going to call this one the area, and that's just going to go ahead and calculate the area. Again, we can use this little neat trick. I can go ahead and say the dimensions here, so I'm just going to say dimensions. That's going to be present, and we can index into it like this by saying dimensions. Another very cool TypeScript trick, which can allow you to infer the types. We think, then go ahead and return the dimensions by saying dimensions.height times dimensions.width. Finally, let's go ahead and sort these out. We can say return list.sort, 
we're going to pick, uh, take our two values. I always call these X and Y. And we're just going to go ahead and do the comparison. Return area, X dot dimensions is less than area Y dot dimensions. Uh, if it is, we're going to say one, or it could be negative one. Uh, this comparison might be incorrect, but that's why we're writing tests. It makes it a lot easier to implement this stuff without having to think too much. Uh, obviously it was incorrect, my test is failing. So all we need to do is go ahead and reverse this. I'm going to change it to be greater than. Uh, and that is still failing, unfortunately. I think I'm using the wrong assertion uh, because the actual values do look correct. What I need to do is head back here and change this. I think I can use to equal instead, and that is now working correctly. I am going to watch this one fail by just making it fail again. Uh, this should make it fail. It does fail, and now it is passing. So everything is working correctly. Let's go ahead and implement the opposite one, which is going to be descending order. What we need to do is go ahead and just uh, save a little bit of time by copying this test. So I'm going to copy and paste it down here. Finally, I'm going to say B and A is expected, and we're going to pass in the wrong order, A and B. If I go ahead and remove the only, it's going to make one of these pass and one of these fail, exactly what I expected. Finally, we need some way to tell which order we'd like to sort these out in. So let's go ahead and add that to our sort function. We're going to jump over here and have a second argument, which is going to be the order. It's either going to be ascending or descending. I'm actually going to define a type for that just because it feels like a fairly core part of this system. Uh, the entire point of this is to uh, sort things out. Let's just go ahead and call it order. It's going to be either ascending or it's going to be descending. Finally, I'm going to pass that one in. And depending on that value, we're going to return something different. We already know that this one is going to be the ascending one. So I'm just going to go ahead and return that. If it's not ascending, it must be descending. So let's just go ahead and paste that one in. All we need to do is reverse this. We save this one off now. Uh, unfortunately, it is still failing. I guess I did something wrong. Uh, which test is failing? You can see the ascending one is now failing, which is uh, not really ideal. I guess we need to reverse these. Again, this is why testing is good. We don't have to think too much. Uh, and we're still feel seeing a failure here, which is the descending one. So I guess we need to fix this one up. Oh, I see the problem. We haven't actually passed in the correct values. Huh, this is working correctly. What we need to do is make sure we're passing in the correct one here is ascending, and then we're going to have descending. What was happening was it was always defaulting to this condition down here because I didn't pass in this, it was undefined. Now they are both passing, which is definitely what I was expecting. Uh, the final thing we're going to need to do here is glue this all together in our component, which is going to be very, very easy because we've implemented all of the logic already. Let's go ahead now and do that. We're going to jump down here and import everything from sort. We need to grab a few things. I'm going to grab sort, and I'm also going to grab the type definitions, but I am going to keep these ones separate. I'm going to grab both order, and we're also going to grab uh, present. We may need that one. The first thing we need to do is some way to uh, keep track of which order we're actually using. So I'm going to use a ref. Let's go ahead and say order is equal to a ref. And this one is going to be an order type. It is going to be undefined by default. I believe one of the requirements of this is to show the default order, which is just going to be uh, whatever order they come in. So I can leave this empty, and this is going to be undefined as well as order. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and have our array. I'm just going to call it sorted. It is going to be computed, and that is going to be based on the order. So firstly, we're going to see if order is actually defined. If order is undefined, we're just going to go ahead and return. So I'm just going to say return presence. Finally, we need to do our checks. So we're going to see if order.value is equal to ascending. If it is, we're just going to call that correct function. So I'm going to go ahead and say return sort, pass in the presence, and then we're going to pass in ascending. Finally, we're going to do something very similar down here for descending. Let's pass that in as well. <laughs> it's a fairly obvious refactor we can do here, which we're going to do in just a moment. Finally, let's go ahead and try this out. We're going to jump up here and make sure we're using the correct array, which is going to be sorted. And now we need a button to be able to toggle this. So let's go ahead and create one. On click, we're just going to go ahead and change the order. Let's go ahead and just say, uh, we're going to reassign the order. So I might just say handle change. Going to go ahead now and define this function. I do like to keep my uh, complexity out of my templates inside of my scripts tag. Going to create a new one here called handle change. We're going to go ahead and check the uh, order we'd like to assign. By default, it's going to be undefined. So I'm going to see if it's undefined by saying order.value is undefined. If it is, we're going to go ahead and say ascending. So I'm going to say order.value is equal to ascending. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and say it's descending. So I'm just going to say else order.value is equal to descending. Uh, this is incorrect, I should be assigning. 
Finally, let's go ahead and give this one a try. Save it off and head back to the browser for the very first time. We have our array here. We have the default order. If I hit sort, it is going to be ascending and now it's going to be descending. So everything is working correctly. Unfortunately, it's not toggling back. So let's go ahead and fix that one up. We can see this is not doing what we're expecting. We're missing a check, which is to see if it is going to be ascending or descending. So if its order is undefined or if order is equal to descending, we are going to toggle it to be ascending. Let's go ahead and give that one a try as well. And this is working correctly. Finally, we're going to make one more factor, which is uh, fairly obvious. Ascending, ascending, descending, descending, which is really not ideal. What we can do is go ahead and see if order.value is undefined. If it is, we can just go ahead and return presence. Otherwise, we can just go ahead and return sort and pass in order.value, which we know is defined at this point. It's going to be a little bit more concise. Just go ahead and make sure it's still working. We definitely should write some Cypress tests to make sure uh, the user interface is working correctly, but clearly it is, and that was fairly straightforward to implement. I will leave writing a test as an exercise, but it is uh, fairly simple and straightforward. The final thing I'd like to do is show the current order, which we're currently not showing, which is a little confusing, and remove this unneeded export. Let's go ahead here and show the correct order we're currently sorting in. So I'm going to say sort by and the opposite condition here. So we're going to say if order is equal to ascending, we're going to show the opposite, it's going to be descending, otherwise it is going to be ascending. Finally, let's head back here and we see sort by ascending, sort by descending, that is working correctly. Out of the box, ascending is the default as well, which is exactly what I was expecting. And that does bring us to the end of this challenge. One of the things that's really nice here is how we've isolated our logic and our component. And you can see how simple our component is. Uh, we have a very, very simple conditional here and our computed property is also as straightforward. It clearly represents all the states of the system. The default where order is undefined or sorting out depending on the order. Finally, if we jump into order, uh, of course, this is more complex. In general, your business logic is going to be much more complex than your user interface layer, as you would expect. This is very straightforward again. There is no reactivity here. There is no imports. It is plain old JavaScript, which makes it dead simple to test as well. And we've covered all our bases inside of our tests. Finally, we're nice and type safe by using this uh, neat little trick, which I'm really happy with. And this brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one.